In this video, we're going to go over why the CompTIIT Fundamentals Certification is a good fit for some people and not so much for other people. All right, gang, so let me just give you a quick little backstory of what to expect on the actual exam. So the exam is 75 questions, and to knock out those 75 questions, you get 60 minutes. The passing score on the actual certification is 650 out of 900. So at a minimum, you have to get a 650 out of 900 to pass the exam. Now, the exam and the certification actually cost $119 to knock out. And if you fail the um, exam, there is no refund or half off. You would just have to pay $119 again. So in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, and this is what I tell my students, um, the IT fundamentals course is geared towards super duper fundamentals, like uh, just really, really, really fundamental stuff, all right? So entry level, super entry level stuff. So even on the CompTIA website, they say that this is for uh, good prep for career changers, people in middle school, and people in high school. And I also like to add this is for people who consider themselves computer illiterate, uh, have issues navigating operating systems, have issues, um, op, uh, navigating Facebook, Instagram, um, have issues with Microsoft Word, just people that don't feel comfortable with technology at all. This is the lane that you guys should probably go. So um, just to introduce myself, just so we won't be strangers, I'm Rob. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, you can drop them in the comments below, or you can email me or you can actually head over to itmasterkey.com and look at the courses that we offer. So um, while I was developing courses, I was actually about to develop, and I did develop an ITF or IT fundamentals course, and I was going to you know, put it out for people to enroll, and it was going to be for a fee. But um, after I did a lot more research and looked at a, a, a couple of different things, I noticed that employers or just in the marketplace people weren't really looking for itf plus so i uh, actually start giving it away for free um that course is actually filled now and i'm actually revamping it and when i revamp it and uh redistribute it it'll be free as well so after i saw that people weren't really uh fiending over this because most people are getting certified getting certified almost choked to death <laughs> most people are getting certified because either they're changing careers or they're looking to get promoted in their current career. And I don't believe that ITF Plus will uh, give you or garner that type of respect. If you don't believe me, you can go to Indeed, uh, Monster, uh, wherever else, in, uh, LinkedIn and see you know, what jobs want you to have ITF Plus. Other than an ITF Plus instructor, I don't, I don't really know what job would um, make you want to uh, get ITF plus or require you to get ITF plus. So um, I'm going to give you a couple example questions. I actually have a test prep um, lecture right after this video to see, you know, how you feel. If you go through those questions and you feel like, damn, I don't really know this stuff, then ITF plus may be for you. But if you rock through these questions and, oh, this is too easy, like I tell my students, um, all of my students, I tell them to go directly for A+. Um, I don't uh, advise any of my students to actually get ITF Plus certified. I say, hey, it has some cool concept, it has some fundamental stuff that may, you know, make the A plus stuff a little bit more easily digestible. But as far as actually paying for the test and taking it, I don't advise any of my students to do that. Now, CompTIA is a wonderful organization. Uh, damn near all the questions or all the courses that I've created are CompTIA specific because I believe in their certifications. And this one, like I said, I believe in this one as well, but it's just for a very niche demographic, a very small demographic, right? It's um, basically for people that just don't feel comfortable. Uh, it's basically ICF Plus would be com would be for someone who wouldn't feel doing what I'm, wouldn't feel comfortable setting up what I'm doing right now. They wouldn't feel plugging in a webcam and recording themselves. They wouldn't really, they wouldn't really click. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some people don't like technology. Some people didn't grow up with technology. So everybody's in a different space in their life. So 
Um, let me give you an example of a question. Um, here we go. Listen very carefully and tell me what you think. This is the type of questions that would be on the um, ITF Plus exam. A uninterruptible power supply is used for what? Would it be used for preventing viruses? Would it be used for um, making the CPU faster? Would it be used for backup during a power outage? Or would it be used for um, replay attacks? What do we think? What do we think an uninterruptible power supply would be used for? Hopefully, you said uh, as a backup for power outages. All right, so those types of questions, and there's nothing wrong with it because you got to understand it's at the core root, and this is after you've studied. This is after you went through everything. Those are the type of questions that would be um, on the exam. And like I said, it goes over a lot of terminology, a lot of stuff to give somebody that, that's not familiar with anything a really, 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 really good foundation, okay? But... We figured out who is for, and I want to say we figured out who, who is not for. And who is not for is for somebody that's definitely looking for uh, employment, um, who's looking for promotions, um, and stuff like that, all right? So if you get ITF Plus, if you get certified, I'm proud of you. That's great. You know, knowledge is power, and as long as you learn and educate yourself, you can't lose. But I would just say as far as the financial uh, obligation, and actually getting ITF Plus certified and putting down at $120, uh, I'm not sure if that would be a great investment. So in the comments below, uh, you can tell me what you think. And like I said, if you're looking for a course, we've got an A-plus course rocking out right now, which is a CompTIA uh, course, and you can head over to itmagicky.com and enroll. It's 24-7, worldwide, self-paced. You can study whenever you need to. So after this, make sure you stay tuned because I got um, a couple practice questions because I want to also help out the people that um, are looking to get ITF Plus even after, you know, this discussion. Like I said, if you're in middle school, high school, or if you just don't feel comfortable, start where you want to start as long as you're comfortable, okay? Um, so go ahead and rock through these questions. All right, gang, let's run through this quick ITF Plus test prep lecture just to get you a little bit more acclimated with what to expect on the actual exam. And like I said uh, in the previous video, after going through this um, test prep lecture, you can better understand if ITF Plus is for you or if you can uh, move on to other certifications. All right, let's go ahead and rock through it. First one, eavesdropping would primarily concern what? Of the following, what would eavesdropping correlate to? Easy. Confidentiality. So, eavesdropping is trying to figure out something that is secret, something that you're not supposed to know. Eavesdropping is trying to decipher, figure out, steal, overhear confidential information. Next up, typing your username and password would be considered what? Typing in your username and password would be considered an input, okay? Ransomware is when an attacker does what? This one's pretty simple. The answer's in the answer. So it's when an attacker holds data in return for a ransom. For example, you get on your computer and you get a pop-up notification that says, hey, we have your baby pictures. We have your uh, the pictures that you took at the office party. We have some pictures that you don't want anybody else to see. And... We need you to send us $500, $1,000, or we need you to complete a certain action, or we're going to send this to 
the media. Or we're going to upload this to Facebook. Or we're going to upload this to Instagram. Okay. Next up. Of the following, what would be considered multi-factor authentication? So I'm going to give you the answer. Then I'll let you think about it for a little while. Why that's the actual answer. So the question was, which of the following is multi-factor? And the answer was smart card and password. Why is that answer correct? And why are the other ones incorrect? All right, when you um, authenticate, there's a couple different ways you can do it. It's something that you know, something that you have, something that you are, something that you do, or your location so a pin and password that's the same thing that's something you know facial and voice recognition that's something that you are passphrase and pin that's something that you know as well the only thing that would be multi-factor two or more things would be smart card that's something that you have and password which is something that you know all right cloud storage is much more secure than traditional storage. Is this true or false? Now, on the actual exam, there are no true or false questions. But once again, this is just to get you acclimated and just to pretty much gauge where you are in the certification process. So what do we think the answer is? Hopefully, you said false. Um, inherently, cloud storage is no more secure than physical storage. All functions performed in the GUI can be executed in the CLI. All functions performed in the GUI can be executed in the CLI. So, those are acronyms. Hopefully, you know what those acronyms stand for. If you don't, GUI, graphical user interface, that's what we're using right now. Pretty pictures, you can see things. CLI is the command line interface, and that's where you would have to actually type in the correct commands to execute whatever you're trying to do. The answer to this is true. Whatever you can do in the GUI, you can also perform that in the command line. NFC is very dependent on proximity to work effectively. Let's just act like that word is dependent and not defendant. I don't know why I typed it like that. I just got excited, I guess. All right, perfect. That answer is true. So NFC stands for near field communication. Um, there's a lot of debit credit cards that have those chips. There's also a bunch of mobile devices that have NFC as well. A lot of times you use it to process payments. So you can just wave it up against the process payment, whether it's at a checkout line and then the NFC technology or take whatever stored information that you have, whether it's your credit card, PayPal, and actually use that to pay for the product or service that you're trying to get. All right. A collection of patches is called a what so a patch is just pretty much a software update or a fix that patches some kind of vulnerability or some kind of compatibility issue within a program so instead of giving you 10 patches separately what would it be called if they grouped all those patches together and gave them to you perfect it's called a service pack Windows Defender is used to detect network outages. Is that true or false? That is false. So Windows Defender is used to detect and get rid of spyware, not to detect network outages. All right, gang. So. You got my opinion on the ITF Plus exam. Um, once again, 
it's cool to learn this stuff, but I'm not sure or I don't believe that the actual certification is worth uh, grabbing. Um, I don't steer my students to go towards that. But if you are studying for ITF Plus, if you want that certification, by all means, go knock it out. Um, education is always good, no matter what form. But like I said, if your main goal is employment, that's not really one of the certifications that um, employers are looking for. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like the video, comment on the video with any questions or any other videos that you would like to see and subscribe. And also, if you need any type of certification assistance, you can head over to itmasterkey.com and enroll in a self-paced course. Um, follow us on Twitter, listen to the podcast, like us on Facebook. And other than that, I'll see you in the next lecture.